It is so marvelous to see all of you here today for this annual celebration that is hosted and presented by the Pennsylvania Legislative Black Caucus. My name is Thera Martin Milling. I'm from Philadelphia, and I claim all of the Philadelphia elected officials who are state-level elected officials as mine, okay? So I am proud to be here on behalf of them, but proud for the whole state of Pennsylvania. And I must add that I think that our legislators who chose to wear uh, African garb today as an expression of this celebration today, it is just a marvelous thing. I think you all look like kings and queens, as our history shows that we are. At this time, we're going to have some opening remarks by Marcellus Taylor from Penn State Harrisburg, a graduate of Penn State Harrisburg. Um, uh, Mr. Taylor, come on up. Good morning, or well, rather good afternoon. Um, greetings, dear brothers and sisters. <clears throat> I am humbled, honored, and heightened by this opportunity to open this festive celebration of leaders who so selflessly gave themselves to be the pillars that we stand on today. I want to first recognize Representative Vanessa Brown, who's the chairwoman of the Pennsylvania Legislative Black Caucus, and Mr. Brandon Flood, the executive director. Your leadership is an inspiration for all of us assembled here today. Once again, I am Marcella C. Taylor, um, a Master's of Education candidate at Penn State Harrisburg um, from the city of brotherly love and sisterly affection, Philadelphia. So I'm excited. And also, um, recent, I am a recent author of a book entitled Don't Box Me In, Nine P's of Creative Leadership. But now that the procedure is done, I want to get all that out the way to handle the business of today. We are here to honor the legacy in life of two sheroes who taught us how to make change in America for what Sly Davis and the Family Stone would call everyday people. These sheroes, these leaders, these political pioneers allowed us to identify with the my and the patriotic lyrical masterpiece, my country tis of thee, sweet land of liberty, of thee I sing, land of where my fathers died, land of the pilgrim's pride, from every mountainside, let freedom ring. Yes, they embodied the essence of true trailblazers. They were faced with stumbling blocks, which they turned to their stepping stones, with sexism, which they turned to their success, and most importantly, with trials, which ended up being their triumph. They were the modern day Good Samaritans who showed us how to take care of the beaten, the bruised, and the burdensome, and yes, Oftentimes, they fought against systems of oppressions in that time, which was the yet-to-be United States. And they used it as the platform to speak up and out against forces of evil, which eroded an entire nation. So that brings us to this grand celebration. Today, we will hear poetic expressions, empowerment speeches, historical reenactments, and uplifting musical selections, which will set our heart ablazing. But before I take my seat, I must say that we have modern day pioneers in the room from the Pennsylvania Legislative Black Caucus who helped shape my own public service. I'll never forget growing up in Philly, I heard uh, prayers in the morning at 5.30 a.m. I just wanted to sleep, but I heard Representative Louise Williams Bishop pray on the morning station, and my grandma would wake us up to pray. Also remember when I was the moderator for the first ever youth led um, mayoral debate in 2007 in the city of Philadelphia, Representative Dwight Evans, and he said these powerful words. He said, if I'm not elected, I still have people to take care of. But I remember when I was 15 years old, and I seen him walking around here, Representative Ron Waters was speaking at a community center in Yaden, and he told me that community is the most imperative thing you could ever do. And Representative Sherelle Parker, who taught me the power of positive role models with her Boys to Men, which I participated in. And most importantly, my representative, I have to acknowledge her, who taught me the power of leadership. And she was fulfilling a role of a longtime, lifetime um, state legislator, but she easily got in there and she's the chair of our caucus today. So, in my closing remarks, I want to add to those great songs of my country, Tis of Thee, our joy, our hearts today, the tribute. Gratefully we pay, happy and free, after our toils and fears, after our blood and tears, strong with our hundred with a hundred years, O oh God to thee. 
Let us prepare for an amazing program. And remember, there are pioneers among us today. Thank you. Well stated, young man, well stated. Now, for those of you who may have just entered the Capitol and you're kind of like, well, what, what's going on? What's going on? This is a celebration of African-American history today here at the Capitol, hosted by the Pennsylvania Legislative Black Caucus. Give them a round of applause. We appreciate what they're doing. And, and real quickly, I would just say that um, claiming your culture, be that Irish, Italian, African-American, Korean, Vietnamese, Brazilian, whatever your culture is, we say claim your culture and be proud of it. And so that is why we're so glad that the Pennsylvania Legislative Black Caucus brought this event back again this year, and they've been doing it every year since the late state senator, Roxanne H. Jones, first started the Black History Celebration here in Harrisburg years and years ago. Anyway, let me move on. We're going to get to our opening prayer at this time, which is uh, another part of the culture for many of us, I believe, standing in this rotunda right now, opening a program in prayer. So without further ado, we're going to have the president of the Interdenominational Ministers Conference of Harrisburg come forward at this time, Bishop A.E. Sullivan, Jr. Good afternoon, everyone. Let us pray. God of our weary years and God of our silent tears, once again we thank you for this day. We thank you for your goodness, your grace, and your mercy. We're thanking you for all that you've done down through the years, throughout all of our lives. We praise you on today and we thank you for the gathering of your people that have come from far and wide. And we thank you for all of the heroes and sheroes down through the years that have worked hard through the Pennsylvania Legislative Black Caucus and so many others in our culture that have fought to improve life for others. And we thank you for that. And God, on today we pray that you would move in this celebration, that you would have your way, that you would help us to celebrate that which you have done in time past. And then we pray for your strength to help us in the days ahead for those battles that have not yet been won and those challenges that have not been crossed yet. We ask strength, and so we pray for all of our leaders, from President Obama down to our governor, down to our senators and legislators, down to our commissioners and mayors, and all of those that are in authority. We pray for them, and we thank you on today for all the things you've done to help minimize and help to reduce the prejudice, the discrimination, the injustice in our nation. We thank you even on today for Dr. King and many other civil rights leaders that have fought to make things better for us on today. And so we don't take it for granted and we thank you and we glorify you and we pray that your name would be magnified in this celebration today and in the days ahead. Watch over our communities and our families. Help us, lead us, and guide us. And we pray this in the mighty and matchless and marvelous name of Jesus. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Bishop. We appreciate your prayer so much. And at this time, wonderful young lady, wonderful singer, Aaliyah Watson, where are you? Aaliyah Watson is coming up at this time, and she is going to do a rendition of the Black National Anthem. Everyone, please stand. Hello. I'll be singing um, the first and third verse. Lift every voice and sing Till earth and heaven ring Ring with the harmonies of living let our rejoicing rise high as the listening skies. Let it resound loud as the rolling sea. Sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us Facing the rising sun of our new day begun Let us march 
march on till victory is won. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, Thou who hast brought us thus far on our way, Thou who hast by Thy might led us into the light, keep us forever. For in the path we pray, lest our feet stray from the place that our God where we met thee, lest our hearts drunk with the wine of the world we forget thee, shadowed beneath thy forever stand true to our God true to our native land thank you so very much Aaliyah we appreciate your talents that God has blessed you with at this time, we get to bring up uh, uh, the lady who really helped to make all of this happen, and certainly she is the one who invited me to be here today, and I am humbled by the invitation to act as her mistress of ceremonies because she could have gotten anyone in Philadelphia or anywhere, one from Pennsylvania, to do the job, so I thank her. She's dynamic, she's energetic, she's young, she's bright. She is one of the political rising stars out of Pennsylvania. We're very, very proud of her and all of her achievements. We're thrilled that she was recently elected the chair of the Pennsylvania Legislative Black Caucus. So at this time, we will present to some and introduce to others the Honorable State Representative Vanessa Lowry Brown from the 190th District. Yeah. Good afternoon. At this time, I'd like to invite all of the members of the, of the Pennsylvania Black Legislative Caucus to please come and stand with me while I do my opening address. Wow. At the end of my address, I will identify all of our members. Good afternoon again, everyone. I'm Vanessa Lowry Brown, and I represent the 190th Legislative District. As the chairwoman of the Pennsylvania Black Legislative Caucus, I would like to welcome you and thank you for attending this year's Black History Celebration. This year's theme is Political Pioneers. This is an opportunity to recognize some of the contributions of those who have led the way to where we are today. A fact that most of you may be unaware of, I am the first African American woman elected to represent my district in West Philadelphia and in North Philadelphia. <laughs> However, I know that I would not be here today if it wasn't for others before me not willing to bl blaze the new trails of others to be here. While being an African American in politics is still difficult, imagine the hardships that faced it Crystal Bird Fawcett. She was the first African American female ever elected to the State House when she was elected to represent Philadelphia's 8th Ward in 1938. Not just first in Pennsylvania, the first in the United States. She was served one term and then helped Eleanor Roosevelt by taking a position and dealing with race relations in the Office of Civil Defense. Shirley Chisholm represented the state of New York in Congress for seven terms beginning in 1968. She also had the courage to become the first African-American woman to make a legitimate run for president. 
Without her leading the way, it is very possible that we would not have the president that we have today, President Barack Obama. Ronald H. Brown, that was really quiet. President Barack Obama, maybe I need to say that again. <laughs> Thank you. The Honorable Ronald H. Brown became the first African American to head a national party when he served as chairman of the Democratic National Committee and a post he took after Democrats lost the election in 1988. In addition, Ron Brown's efforts were instrumental in electing Bill Clinton as the President of the United States, who then appointed him Secretary of Commerce. Sadly, it was while serving as Secretary that he, lo he lost his life in a plane crash. Our program booklet has more information on these pioneers and others, as well as the honorees that we have are Supreme Court Justice Sonia Sotomayor, Congresswoman Patsy to help me out, Patsy to to uh, okay, just go with it. <laughs> okay, Patsy Mink and the former Secretary of State Colin Powell. When you have a moment, take a time to read the condensed version of their biographies on the program and use the links that are found in the back of the program to learn more about these trailblazers. That's for all of our children. We want them to know about their past. On behalf of the Pennsylvania Legislative Black Caucus, we hope that you will enjoy the words and works of our presenters, the great musical talent, the reenactment of the life of Shirley Chisholm, done by our Honorable Artie Brown from Philadelphia, that are all scheduled today. Thank you for coming, and I hope you enjoy this year's Black History Celebration. I'd like to now just acknowledge all of the members of the Pennsylvania Black Legislative Caucus who are here with us today. And we'd like to start with Patty Kim, our newest member. Margo Davison. James Clay, another newly elected. Another heavy hitter just new to this caucus, Jordan Harris. What is this, the newly erected section here? And another one of our great members newly elected is Mr. Ed Ganey. One more newbie we have here is J.P. Miranda. I can't say newbie here, wait a minute. No, you can't say that about me. The Honorable. Newly elected secretary, we have a newly, secretary of our Democratic Caucus, Ronald G. Waters. The Honorable Michelle Brownlee. Yay. Newly elected, what's your name? <laughs> Steve Kinsey. <laughs> The Honorable Chairman of our Education Committee, James Roebuck. Another one of our chairmen, Curtis Thomas. And another chairman, all these chairmen, isn't this great? Our chairman Thaddeus Kirkland, the Reverend Thaddeus Kirkland. And I'd like to acknowledge and make mention of several members that are in our, in our audience. And if I, forg if I can't get your name right, it's because you're new. So help me out, okay? I'll let you know in advance. So we have um, Phyllis Mundy is here. <laughs> Member of our executive board, Mike Hanna. <laughs> our leader, Frank Dermony. <laughs> and not a member of the House of Representatives, but we're so grateful that you're here, Mayor Linda Thompson. Thank you so much of this, of this great city, Harrisburg. And Brendan Boyle. And help me out. Senator Rob Teplis, new, newly elected Senator Rob Teplis. From right here, this is your district. Well, welcome and thank you for being here. And we have McCain, I call you by your last name, Mulganey. Marchaney, all right. <laughs> and the Honorable State Representative Saccone and his lovely wife are here.
then last but not least, oh, I got another row, second row. This is wonderful. We got a second row. All right. So I see Brian Sims is here. <laughs> Sue Helm just waved me in the back. And we also have our Chair of Appropriations, Honorable Markosik. And my brother in the house, Ed Nelson. Thank you for being here. Oh my goodness, well, my, aren't we blessed to have so many members? So, okay, I'm getting tired. I have to start calling out names. Steve McCarter is here. And, and Eddie, Eddie, Eddie Fiziski and, all right. Steve Sanicero. And we have, okay, come on, help me out. Rick Marabito. This is political, I'm sorry, we have to make all of these announcements. Rick Marabito, and we have a member sitting down. Frank Farina. Frank Farina, he's another newly elected. All right, and we have more, wait a minute. And this is, oh, what's this, Schlossberg? No, no. No, you're Ferry. Hal English. Ferry, okay, all right. And Farino, you know, this is a testament that so many people are understanding that diversity and culture is so important. I want to thank all of our members for just embracing us. And there's, Dan, hey, and Dan, that's one of my buddies over there, yes. So there's so many that are here, and I don't want to, and there's, oh, they're telling me that we have. Hal English. Hal English is here, okay. And did I miss anyone else? And there's someone else hiding in the back. All right, so I have everyone, all the way in the back. Okay, we got it, okay, we have everyone. All right, thank you so much, and I apologize to everybody watching, but this is what we have to do. We are honoring political pioneers, and without all of the people that I mentioned, we couldn't do the job for you. So this is a moment that we just take out just to say thank you and congratulate them for all of their efforts. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and I'm going to turn this back over to our MC. We are so blessed to have the lovely Thera Martin Connolly, Milling, Milling, newly, uh, newly married. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. And I am delighted to be here. At this time, as we keep this program moving, we have a dynamic group of young people from the heart of West Philadelphia that are going to present a musical selection for us. They come from a school that is a miracle. It is a miracle. It is called the Global Leadership Academy. And their choir is going to be performing in a second. But just quickly, let me tell you that their school building burnt down, uh, Kim, what, two years ago? about two years ago, and I guess a lot of people thought everything is lost, there's nothing we can do about this. But because of the strong leadership of the president of that school, Dr. Naomi Booker, and then having people like State Representative Vanessa Lowry Brown and others back her up, they were able to rebuild, and they've got a beautiful, fabulous, state-of-the-art charter school in the heart of West Philadelphia. And we're very proud of it. And we're very proud of all of our young people behind us. and. Um, they're getting ready to sing like the angels that they are.
We can do better than that for our young people. Come on now. Come on. And of course, we want to let you know once again that those talented young people are from the Global Charter Academy, and that is in the heart of State Representative Vanessa Lowry Brown's district, the 190th Legislative District. OK. Um, we're getting ready to have an outstanding, wonderful, historical reenactment of Shirley Chisholm. 
And before that gets done, however, we have got to recognize another wonderful lawmaker who is here. I'm sorry, a little change in the program, but this is very important. We have our leader, Frank Dermody, our leader of the Democratic Caucus, would like to come up and give us some words. Could you please come and address us? Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thanks, Vanessa. No problem, my love. Thank you, Vanessa. And I've got to follow the choir. They were, they were unbelievable, weren't they? Let's give them another round. They were tremendous. But, Thank you, Chairwoman Lowry Brown, for giving me the opportunity to participate here today. And it truly is fitting that we're here today, and it's appropriate to celebrate political pioneers because certainly you are one in your district, as you've already talked about, and here in Harrisburg. So thank you for all that you're doing too, Vanessa. We appreciate it. And of course, it's a pleasure to be with all of you here today to join us in helping celebrate the people of color who were pioneers of government and politics like uh, Crystal Bird Fawcett of Philadelphia. She was the first African-American, I believe, elected in American state legislature. She was an advocate for health care, housing, uh, women's employment. And as I was reading through her biography, she's also a friend of Eleanor Roosevelt's and she worked on civil defense issues. And I also know that many members of the Legislative Black Caucus are very active working with our, new, with our First Lady, Michelle Obama, on healthy food issues. And that's important for all of us. And this is a very important time for members of the Legislative Black Caucus because they're more than ever here. So we need to all work together and we continue to work closely with you to make sure we help carry the issues that will help all of us represent our people better. And because if we are speaking about political pioneers, I think it's only appropriate that I want to say anything that the President Barack Obama gave a magnificent speech last night. Uh, it really was clear from watching him that he's at the top of his game and he, he, he really gave us a sense of he, where he wants to do his place in history. Um, he talked about jobs, he talked about increasing the minimum wage, and he talked about more fairness in American society. And I don't know about you, but the end of that speech, and he talked about, he sent an important message to all of us really, but as citizens we have to work hard and make sure we work every day to make our country a better place to live and to work. That's a theme I hear again here today, too. What's we're all about? That's why we ran for office, to make our places where we live, our districts, this state, a better place to live and to work. So much work needs to be done. We know that. Uh, those dreams that all of us, those who came before us had, have not yet been fully realized. We know that. We have that work to do. But I can tell you from, from, from all of us and, and every member here today, it's just that we look forward to working together with all of you to make sure that we have a better future for ourselves, for our children, for all the people of Pennsylvania. I want to thank the Legislative Black Caucus for all they do to make sure that happens. Thank you, folks. Thank you, Vanessa. We also have been very blessed to also have another leader in the House of Representatives, and this is our majority leader, Representative Mike Torzai. Could you please come and make some remarks? Representative Brown, and to all the members of the Pennsylvania Legislative Black Caucus, and to the citizens of Pennsylvania, thank you for inviting me to participate today on this important day. I want to tell you, I know you're honoring uh, two very important uh, historical figures, uh, Crystal Bird Fawcett and Congresswoman Shirley Chisholm. I want to just tell you a little bit about uh, growing up in Western Pennsylvania. My mom um, was a lifelong Republican. My dad was a lifelong Democrat. And I have to tell you, when Shirley Chisholm came on to the national political landscape, both of my parents were exceptionally impressed. I remember. My mom and dad were not political people, but they never missed voting. And I remember my mom one day watching uh, Congresswoman uh, Chisholm on TV, and she said, you know, that lady is a good lady, and she is a great leader. And her ability to communicate and to talk about uh, that, that there should be equal rights for each and every citizen really struck a nerve, I remember, with my parents. And uh, I have to say, it's an honor for me to be with Representative Brown and all my colleagues honoring her as well as um, uh, Crystal Fawcett. I have to tell you the contributions that you make in uh, bringing issues, important 
on, to so many of the minority communities, but really they are issues that speak to each and every Pennsylvanian. I just think that sometimes, given your knowledge and your leadership in changing Pennsylvania, that you make us all aware of how they affect each and every person's lives. And uh, Representative Brown, I have to say, you are a dynamic person in that same, uh, that same vein, and thank you for having me be a part of this important day today. All righty, I am delighted that this time you want to talk about history? You want to talk about history? Well, Leanna Washington was the first woman to be the chair of the Pennsylvania Legislative Black Caucus. She's currently come back just to work as the vice chair. She's dynamic. She's going to come up and say a couple words right quick. State Senator Leanna M. Washington. Good afternoon. I'm really delighted to be here to be vice chair with my chairwoman, Vanessa Brown Lowry. Um, even though I wasn't in the House of Representatives, still worked with the Pennsylvania Legislative Black Caucus, um, I guess kind of invisibly, just being morally supportive. Um, certainly, whenever there's an event going on from back when Thaddeus Kirkland, Jim Roebuck, and all the, those men who served as chair before me, you know it's about us working together get, to get something done for our constituents back home. We're sent here as, a, as elected officials to work together on issues that are pertinent to the people that we serve. So that's what it's all about for me. Happy to be here with the mayor of Harrisburg, Linda Thompson. Um, work with her long before she was elected mayor so we know what it's about the struggle. And that's what Dave Richardson always taught us is that what we're doing here is part of a struggle that's gonna They'll be going on long after we leave here. This is my 20th year here. Thaddeus, how long you been here? 20. I mean, um, Curtis, how long you been here? 23. So you know the bottom line is that seems like I came through these doors yesterday, young men, and these guys are here to take our places as we step up and move on, that these seats are not ours to keep forever. But as long as we're here, we should be here to work and work for the people that we serve. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Her invisible? Never. Never. She also happens to be my sorority sister of Alpha Kappa Alpha sorority. And now, it just wouldn't be correct. We're standing up here in Harrisburg, in the state capitol. We've got to have the mayor come up and say a few words. Madam Mayor, please come on up. We appreciate you. To our officiator of this great uh, event today. We thank you for your great ability to officiate this event. Um, I am so honored to be here with you today and to the Pennsylvania Legislative Black Caucus, to all of the leaders in this organization. Um, I am certainly honored here today to stand here and help you celebrate our history and to acknowledge the pioneers who have come before us those very individuals who we stood on their shoulders. Uh, I have so many people in this room who I can attest who I stood on their shoulders and as a result of that I became the first African American woman of the city of Harrisburg and the first woman. And it was because of uh, Representative Leanna Washington and um, Representative Curtis and Representative Thaddeus Kirkland and and all of them, and uh, Vincent Hughes, uh, they just kept wrapping their arms around me and staying in touch with me. When I first took uh, this office, uh, we have been in the news uh, since inception. I've been in crisis mode since I took this position, and they know what it is to be a part of the struggle. And they certainly did not leave me out there alone. They would make phone calls, they would visit me, and they would give me wisdom to keep me guiding the ship through. So um, to the leadership of this great organization, Representative Vanessa, Honorable Lowry Brown, President, and uh, to uh, there are great Senator Leanna Washington, who is a true testament of how you take your, yourself up, even when you don't have any shoestrings, and you rise to the top of the cream. And you, 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 you make me proud because you watch me grow up in Dave's, Dave, uh, Representative Dave Richardson's leadership. So I thank you for that. Uh, so members of the Legislative Black Caucus, uh, thank you for inviting me uh, to your annual Black History Month celebration. Uh, and to all of you who are visiting this great city. Uh, 
called Harrisburg. We thank you and we welcome you to our great city and there's so many great things for you to enjoy here in the city and we ask you that before you depart from the city today, those who are visiting us, that you would shop, you would dine, and you would uh, absolutely spend some money in the city of Harrisburg. I don't care whether you get a parking ticket, whether you put money in the meter, whether you go buy a book from a bookstore, whether you eat at a restaurant, that is a prerequisite from the mayor of the city to spend money in this city before you leave here today. And so I thank you for coming to our great city, and it is a great city. And no matter what uh, the news is saying, we are doing great things in here, and we have great assets for you to, to enjoy. And there's great leadership at the helm of this city. So today, it, it is one of, one of those opportunities that we all reach out to each other and strengthen ourselves. Uh, th this is just the, the greatest opportunity for us to be here to do just that. And so I, I don't find it robbery to give up my busy day to come and help celebrate our great history. This is a time to remember and celebrate those who have excelled in the political arena. Uh, and, and despite facing adversity and, and, and to encourage those who are coming along the way uh, to Marcellus, you make us very proud. You were brilliant in your deliverance of your message today. Uh, it, is right, it is the right time. Uh, it is the right time and as adversity appears to be everywhere from the capital of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania to our United States Capitol uh, in Washington, D.C., uh, the, the fact of the matter is there are still political pioneers uh, that we can certainly elevate uh, and that, that there are leaders who remind us that, that the warfare always precedes victory and every impossibility is only an opportunity. Uh, as, I, as, I, as I pondered your theme today, I reflected on the political field of adversity that, that I face as the mayor of the city of Harrisburg. And while doing so, I also saw many people uh, who have gone before me and absolutely are still standing behind me and beside me, and who are soldiers and are standing here today in this room. Pioneers who, who uh, were not afraid to break through racial barriers, uh, who dealt with the most egregious slanders and yet overcame great obstacles. Uh, while we cannot change the past, we can do something about the future uh, of our schools and, and our laws and our neighborhoods and our, our economy. And we can also do something about the movement that we all have launched across this world and making sure we put in responsible gun reform. I should get an applaud for that, responsible gun reform. Too many of our young kids are dying at the hands you know, of irresponsible decisions. And someone is bringing these guns into our neighborhoods. And so we need to get real serious and get behind our president who has used his, his national bully pulpit to put the question on the table, what will you do going forward to help reduce crime in urban cities like all of us who are representatives of? And so the political pioneers like Shirley Chisholm and Crystal Bird Fawcett, uh, Colin Powell, and of course our wonderful President Obama, are not pioneers because they were simply, simply popular, but because they did not give up when adversity presented itself. They fought daunting challenges, and they did so to achieve social equality, and they pressed onward with persistence and fortitude. We celebrate this great history of ours, the accomplishments and the triumphs of the political leaders and pioneers, and I remind you of the words of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., who said, the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at times of challenges and controversy. So let us all, and not be weary in due season, but rather stand tall in our challenges and controversy. And I want to thank every non-African American who felt it important to come and join us today and celebrate our great history. Because one significant thing I like about African American leaders, or men and women in leadership, who just happen to be African Americans, we embrace all cultures and it gives us an opportunity to stand before and use this great platform to show you that we embrace all cultures we always have since inception and so we thank you for coming today and acknowledging the great leadership that is that happened yesterday that got us to where we are and still here is operating in this great capital city making important decisions to impact the lives of all people not just African Americans and so that's the true testament of who we are we embrace everybody so thank you for coming and embracing us today and let us all stand tall together. Okay, we thank you, Madam Mayor, and we appreciate your passion that you have added to the other passions we've heard today thus far. We're going to keep it moving and that much, not too much more to the program, but the best they say is yet to come.
At this time, we're going to ask Artie Brown to come forward. She will come to this podium because she is preparing to do a historical reenactment of Shirley Chisholm. So, Artie Brown, it's your turn. Come on up. And we certainly want to thank all of our sponsors who are here and who have supported this activity today. And we will name them before we close out. But thank you in advance to all of our sponsors. Speaker of the House, committee chairs, elected officers, and citizens. It is with deep gratitude and honor that I stand before you to address this body of distinguished elected officials. The time is now upon us to pave yet another road to our future. Our political system has been designed to accomplish this immense task Together, no one party can do it alone. If we can't, don't, won't, our intricately crafted political machine will jam and shut down because of the overload of wasted words, piles of paper, wasted time, and sometimes intentional setbacks that prevent us from making a decision. The youth don't only fund them, but inspire them, encourage them through your present by you, creating an image that they can respect and cherish to become. Are you going to make sure that the children, yours too, your grandchildren, will not be influenced by what they see on television, in the movies, by what they hear in the music that surround you and them. It can pierce their souls. It can also do something to their minds. Make sure that the elders receive the epitome of respect, that they are honored and conceived as an integral part of this society. It does not belong only to you. Make sure that the knowledge and wisdom of their past can help influence and become a valued instrument for the development of our future. What we say, discuss, and decide upon is going to be the continuation of our culture with the arts being an extremely pertinent component. Bring the arts back. Make sure that the children have it. And make sure that the adults remember it. And that together we can see a rainbow through the earth as a circle. That together the rainbow no longer has a portion out, but it is joined by one side, the youth, and the other side, the elders. That it becomes a circle and the colors don't fade. No, that we will be able to see it when it appears and be aware of why it is appearing through the spirit of the arts. At this time in our lives, we are embracing a part of history that has been given over and over and over again for you to decide upon what is going to be the best for you, no, for the people. Yes. How and why should we battle each other at the fret, threat of devastation for others and enormous prosperity for some? You, sitting here in this rotunda, there is so much to be decided upon. That is your job. To make decisions that are going to correct the wrongs, that are going to elevate and mold the spirit, oh yes, you are that important. And don't allow anyone to take this level of importance and focus away from you. 
They're depending on you. I felt it when I took the oath of office when I was elected. I felt it when I made the decision to run for president. Yes, I knew I wasn't going to win. America wasn't ready for a woman to be elected president, especially a black woman, a black man either. But I was ready. I was ready. I felt that just maybe one day, one day, and now here it is, 2013, and the United States of America has elected for a second term a black man, President Barack Obama. Yes. I knew there was one day. I know that people are cramming at you to get from you what has been given to you by the people who respected you and voted for you. Our jobs are important. If it weren't so, this rotunda full of intellect, drive, and determination would not be strong. Don't let anyone weaken it. Don't let anyone weaken you. I just want you to know that I am still here. I'm not gone, no. I'm still here and I am watching you. I am watching you. Because I know that together, we can make something happen. My spirit is here. It's still here to connect with, ready to join forces. And whenever we are together, we make a force that is unsurmountable. You can no longer sit and decide and wait to the point that things begin to decay. It's taking too long. Your decisions mean that much, not only for the present, but most definitely for the future. Because those decisions that were made in the past is what gave us this present. And what decisions we make now will ensure us a future. There's so much opportunity for more leisure now. So many quicker ways to complete tasks. Why, with the increase of speed of the internet, the use of dragon, email, texting, and other forms of today's technology, you have excuses. And the convenience to not touch, reach out, and inform one another with your human voices. Oh, just, just get it out. Put it on paper. Reams of paper, reams of paper, of written policy saying what? Impressive? Yes. Read completely? Well, so much to do that sometimes very little gets done. Let the speed produced because of technology be pulled up into your being. You being a state senator. You being a state representative. You, Linda Thompson, being the mayor. You, you, you being what? Decision makers. That's what you are. What a position to have. What power to possess. You have it. Do something with it. Please heal your city. Heal this state. Heal our country. Heal the world. People are depending on you those of you who represent 
all of the departments of the state government, you know before the people what's coming down the pike. Make it digestible. Make it your job to understand it. Make it palatable. Rinse it out. So then when it is presented, it is clean and can be trusted. That it is strong enough to sustain, sustain the weight of truth. Ask yourself before you vote on an issue, is it right? Will it help? Is it fair? Call on us. Those of you who s sit in these chairs, call on us. Your future must change. Call on us, those of us who sat in the chairs before you. You must change. The people are relying on you to change. They're relying on you to preserve what has been given. And you took an oath. You took an oath to do it. So do it. Do it. Do it. Promise yourselves to do it. I'm thanking you in advance because I know you will. Because I know you know what must be done. You've been given the torch. Wave it because you can. Don't fear the future. Change it. Change it. Change it. Again, that's Miss Artie Brown doing a rendition of the late, great Shirley Chisholm. And right now we've got another one of those little angels that's going to come forward and do a presentation for us in a musical way. Um, she is dynamic in her own right. She's going to sing uh, Feeling Good, which is a song by Nina Simone. Michaela Shirley, come on up. Flying high, you know how I feel. Sun in the sky, you know how I feel. Breeze drifting on by, you know how I feel. Oh, yeah, it's a new dawn, it's a new day, it's a new life for me. Yeah, it's a new dawn, it's a new day, it's a new life for me. Yeah. Oh, and I'm feeling Fish in the sea, you know how I feel
tell the pine you know how I feel Oh freedom is mine and I know how I feel It's a new time it's a new day it's a new life for me from Didi Bas Gooby Bitty Gooby Bitty 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 Oh yeah Gooby Bitty 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 Oh 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 And I feel it Oh Yeah I feel it Oh yeah Thank you Michaela Michaela if you don't mind my asking Michaela how old are you 11 years young okay <laughs> All right She's going to be one of the great stars coming out of Pennsylvania. I've got to recognize somebody very special who stands in this rotunda right now. He, too, is a part of African-American history. I, for one, am very proud of him and his accomplishments as the mayor of the city of Philadelphia, Mayor Michael Nutter. He's in the building. Please come up for a moment, Mr. Mayor, if you would. I know he has a busy schedule, and he'll probably get me later on, but um, it's out of respect that we certainly ask our mayor, Philadelphia, to come up and say a word or two before he gets back on the highway. Thank you. Um, Sarah, thank you. Uh, I was really just kind of passing through. Uh, where, did they, where did that young lady get to? Can we give her another big, big round of applause? Oh, my goodness. So, so, so I came from down that direction, I guess that's the uh, Senate side, and I couldn't see what was going on. I'm just hearing this voice, and I'm saying, oh, there's like some jazz singer, uh, like adult, uh, <laughs> experienced uh, person singing, and I come around the side, and I said, well, she kind of looks a little young. <laughs> and she's got this voice and this style. Um, and it is so, so wonderful. So thank you very, very much. Here in Harrisburg, in the capital of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, I've come through here, uh, as the members know, for all kinds of uh, performances. And every now and then we have like a little protest uh, or something. This is the best thing that's happened in this capital, in this rotunda, in a long period of time. You keep singing, and uh, I will see you at um, uh, Relish or at, uh, or at Warm Daddy's or at one of the places in Philadelphia, and I'll just be able to say, hey, I met her when she was 11. And, you know, maybe you'll sign something for me or something. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, members, uh, for uh, having uh, this, uh, this great celebration here. Of course, uh, Black History Month, every day is uh, a historical day uh, for African Americans and all other Americans. Uh, this is a great, great capital, uh, great leadership. Again, Representative Parker, chair of our delegation in Philadelphia. But to all of you, thank you very, very much for all that you do, representing the various interests of the great Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. Keep up the great, great work. And again, uh, to our young but uh, oh so experienced performer, I am very, very excited. You, uh, so are you, in, are you from Philly? Okay, all right, I have to get your card. We may need you from up here. Okay, I may need you to sing for something that we have, or just for me from time to time. Thank you, bye-bye. <laughs> See you later. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We appreciate you so much for stopping by. And certainly, I would be remiss if I didn't recognize the head of the Philadelphia delegation, State Representative Sherelle Parker is here. She's here. And I want to represent. And do you know that State Representative uh, Vanessa Lowry Brown is the first African American woman uh, to head the Black Caucus uh, here in Pennsylvania? In, in uh, Pennsylvania, please. Uh, uh, yeah. We had the. Now, yes. Leanna was. Leanna was, mm -hmm. and then uh, Vanessa. She's so can we be first in the House, right, right. and in this yeah. district. Please give her a big, big round of applause. Yeah.
And I see over on the side uh, our, uh, our chair, uh, Rosita Youngblood, uh, who is here from Philadelphia. Good seeing you. And all the other members of the, uh, of the General Assembly. I don't want to miss anybody. And I know uh, I'll, once you start with the names, you tend to miss, uh, tend to miss folks. But I, we are very excited uh, for you. And thank you for your uh, leadership. Uh, thanks for bringing folks together. Everyone uh, can celebrate this great history. It is the history of America. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank, thank you, sir. All right. We thank you, Mr. Mayor, and we certainly hope that his being here in Harrisburg today signifies that he's getting more money to bring home to Philadelphia. <laughs> All right. Now, um, I did want to also recognize uh, State Representative um, Rosita Youngblood. She is my State Representative from the 198th Legislative District. Rosita C. Youngblood, right over there. And State Representative Jake Weekly has now entered the rotunda. Representative Weekly, we appreciate you, sir. Okay, we have a young man by the name of Jeremiah Christian, and he is going to do Drum Major Instinct, a speech originally delivered by Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. So, Jeremiah Christian, come on. I'm Jeremiah Christian, and I will be performing the drum major instinct. The drum major instinct. And our text from the morning is taken from a very familiar passage in the 10th chapter, as recorded by St. Mark. Beginning in the 35th verse of that chapter, we read these words. And James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came unto him, saying, Master, we would that thou shouldest do for us whatsoever we shall desire. And he said unto them, What would ye that I should do for you? And they said unto him, Grant us that we may sit, one on thy right hand and the other on thy left hand, in thy glory. But Jesus said unto them, Ye know not what ye ask, can ye drink of the cup that I drink of? Or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? And they said unto him, We can. And Jesus said unto them, Then ye shall indeed drink of the cup that I drink of. And with the baptism that I am baptized with all shall ye be baptized. But to sit on my right hand and on my left hand is not mine to give but it shall be given to them for whom it is prepared. And then Jesus goes on toward the end of that passage to say, but so shall it not be among you, but whosoever will be great among you shall be your servant. And whosoever of you shall be the chiefest will be servant of all. Now let us look calmly and honestly at ourselves there is deep down within all of us an instinct, a desire to be out front, a desire to lead the parade, a desire to be first. And it is something that runs the whole gamut of life. Our first cry as a baby was a bid for attention. Children ask life to grant them first place. Now in adult life, we still have it. And we really never get by it. We like to do something good. Everybody likes to be praised because of this real drum major instinct. There comes a time that the drum major instinct can become destructive. And that's where I want to move now. I want to move to the point of saying that if this instinct is not harnessed, it can become a very dangerous pernicious instinct. For instance, if it isn't harnessed, it causes one's personality to become distorted. Have you ever heard people that you know, and I'm sure you've met them, that just become sickening because they just sit up all the time talking about themselves? That's the person who has not harnessed the drum major instinct. And then the final great tragedy of the distorted personality 
is that when one fails to harness this instinct, he ends up trying to push others down in order to push himself up. And whenever you do that, you would engage in some of the most vicious activities. You will spread evil, lying gossip on people because you are trying to pull them down in order to push yourself up. And the great issue of life is to harness the drum major instinct. Nineteen centuries have come and gone since Christ the Savior lived on earth. And today he stands as the most influential figure that ever entered human history. All of the armies that ever marched, all of the navies that ever sailed, and all of the parliaments that ever sat, all of the kings that ever reigned put together have not affected the life of man on this earth as much as that one solitary life. He just went around serving and doing good. You can be on Jesus, the loving Savior's right hand and on his left hand if you serve. It's the only way in. And every now and then I think about my own death and I think about my own funeral. I don't think of it in a morbid sense. But every now and then I ask myself, what is it that I would once said? And I leave the word to you this morning. I don't want a long funeral. And if you get somebody to deliver the eulogy, tell them not to talk too long. And every now and then I wonder what I want them to say. Tell them not to mention that I have a Nobel Peace Prize. That's as important. Tell them not to mention that I have three or four hundred other awards. That's not important. Tell them not to mention where I went to school. I'd like for somebody to say on that day that Martin Luther King Jr. tried to give his life serving others. I want you to be able to say on that day that I tried to be right on the work question. I want you to be able to say on that day that I did try my life to clothe those who were naked. I want you to say that I tried to visit those who were in prison. I want you to say that I tried to love and serve humanity. Yes, if you want to say that I was a drum major, say that I was a drum major for justice. Say that I was a drum major for peace. I was a drum major for righteousness. And all of the other shallow things shall not matter. I won't have any money to leave behind. I won't have the fine and luxurious things of life to leave behind. But I just want to leave a committed life behind. And that's all I want to say. If I can help somebody as I pass along. If I can cheer somebody with a word or song. If I can show somebody he's traveling wrong, then my limit will not be in vain. If I can do my duty as a Christian art, if I can bring salvation to a world once wrought, if I can spread the message as the master taught, then my living will not be in vain. Yes, Jesus, I want to be on your right or on your left side not for any selfish reason. I want to be on your right or on your left side, not in terms of some political kingdom or ambition, but I just want to be there in love and in justice and in truth and in commitment to others so that we can make of this old world a new world. I don't know if those of you who are still with us noticed it or not, but that young man did that whole Dr. King speech without any notes up here, okay? So he studied it and he learned it and he memorized it and you did very, very well. Thank you so much for that. Okay, Sonia joins us here. She's got a poem selection called Rise Above It. After that, we're gonna hear a musical lesson from Joy Christian, and then Rep. Vanessa Larry Brown will be back up to give us some closing remarks, and we'll close out in prayer. So, right now, Sonia joins.
As stated, my name is Sonia Joins, and this is Rise Above It. I see you hurting, I see your pain, I see your struggles, and I felt the same. Felt what you've been through, dark night, nights, terrors, fierce consumption of your life, the trials in each pursuit of the misguided bliss, and to think that society calls this happiness. You got knocked down to get back up and got knocked down again. Now you want to stay down in fears that you might drown again, but life doesn't end with your hatred of it. It's the times when it hurts the most that you have to rise above it. It's the hurt and the pain that fuels your fire to win the game we call life. Each mistake, a reminder of the goals you set, makes you more aware and less likely to misstep, unless you're misstep in fear and miswording hate to find your will, to have your name mentioned with the greats, the entrepreneurs, legislators, senators, and heads of states, well, that's great. Because then you can dismiss bad judgment, face the obstacle when it appears, and still rise above it. Erase the disgrace from your face, find your flaws, and embrace that love from that empty space that once housed the drum that powered ambitious and the need for success that had you driven. That drive can revive the deadliest of decisions if you know how to get up, shake it off, and keep on living. I said live, live, and keep on living. Despite the past, just remember the reprimands given. It's never as good as it could be. That's the way life seems, but believe it or not, each day here puts us closer to our dreams. Curve the depression, rise above the deception, speak success into existence dismiss the insolence of ignorance. Display your wisdom like a battle scar. Show the vastness of your journey you come thus far. You're a powerhouse destined for greatness. That truth echoes in the distance. Only your mind's eye can see it. Translate it to your heart and make you believe it. Hold fast to your dreams and make you achieve it. Let my words be the medicine that promotes your healing, cleanses your wounds, and betters your decisions. Restores your focus and repairs your visions so that you may see your dreams accomplished, the success you covet, the dismay that blocks this and still rise above it. Thank you. And now, ooh, one of my favorite, favorite songs. Joy Christian is here. Joy Christian is going to come up and sing Somewhere Over the Rainbow. Somewhere Over the Rainbow, my favorite, one of my favorite songs. Is Joy still around? Okay, she is here. She is here, okay. Um, I imagine she'll be up in just a second. Is she off on the side there, getting the music queued up? Because after that, we only have one more bit of business, and that would be the remarks for State Representative um, Vanessa Lowry Brown, and then Pastor Mary J. White will close us out in prayer. Um, and thanking our sponsors, which I was gonna let the state rep do that, and I know that she will do it again, but I will say it now on her behalf. We thank you, Advance America. Mr. Ron Hicks is here on their behalf, representing, he's the Senior Director of Government Affairs. Advance America, thank you. Thank you for sponsoring and helping to make this event a reality. And also, Access Financial is a sponsor as well. I don't believe they have a representative in the room at the moment, but we thank them equally for stepping up to the plate to say, we will make this happen. And there's our lovely singer right there. All right.
Someday I wish upon a star and wake up where the clouds are far behind me. So far, when troubles melt like lemon drops away upon the chimney tops, that's where, that's where. to wonder if this is a black history celebration or is, if this is America's Got Talent. Because we sure have talent right here in this Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, here in the capital of Harrisburg. I don't know if I've ever been so proud. There was a time when I used to sit in school recitals from my, my son and they used to always say, we make Alex mommy cry. Well, I want to tell you that all of the great talent that we've had here today has made Alex's mommy cry today. I just thank all of you for helping us celebrate our ancestry of people of color. As our gracious mayor said, that we embrace all people of color from all spectrums, all spectrums, from the lightest light to the darkest dark. And that's what this is about, is celebrating us because I can't say it enough, we are one. And we're just waiting for everybody out there to understand that we are one, so that we can work to that common goal, like Congressman Shirley Chisholm told us to do today, to just do it, just do it. And in you, to honor you, all of our ancestors. We have a firm commitment to just do it for all of our people of society. I want to thank you again, thank our sponsors, thank our staff, Department of Governmental Services. We couldn't do that without the sound and all of the great things that we had to put this together today. I'd like to invite everyone to go downstairs and partake in a wonderful reception that our sponsors have put together for us and uh, just continue the celebration of who we are, our ancestry. God bless you all. Thank you, Bishop. God bless you all. Thank you so much. Let us stand, please. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your mercies and your grace. We thank you for your loving kindness. Father, we thank you for everything that has taken place today. Most of all, we thank you for this chairwoman, Representative Vanessa 
Brown. We pray, oh God, that you would give her wisdom, knowledge, and understanding as she chairs the Pennsylvania Legislative Black Caucus. We pray, oh God, that everything that has been done today, that we would, you would receive it, oh God, in Jesus' name. Now unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his throne with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forevermore. And everyone said together, Amen.